Well, first of all, um, actually, from one point of view, who is not Mahaprabhu's disciple? Uh, so it depends on how we define disciple. Because it reminds me of the incident where the son of Advaita Acharya, Achyutananda, <coughs> he hear, overhears someone ask Advaita Acharya, who is Mahaprabhu's guru? And uh, I forget, he either said Ishwara Puri or Keshava Bharati, because we take Ishwara Puri in one context, Keshava Bharati in another. And we hear that Achyutananda, who is a, a Dwaita Acharya, had six sons, and this Achyutananda, Gopal, and one more, they're like three in the right line and three in the wrong line. Three in the right way, three in the wrong way. So Achyutananda, at that time we're told he's around five years old or something like that, but an advanced devotee, even in a five-year-old body. So when he heard Advaita Acharya mention someone as Mahaprabhu's guru, he burst in and became very upset and he was chastising his father, Advaita Acharya. We know sometimes it's Mahavishnu avatar. He's chastising Mahavishnu. Sometimes he's referred to as Sadashiva. He's chastising Sadashiva. He's saying, Father, what nonsense are you telling that someone is Mahaprabhu's guru? And the point he's making is, and with, it almost seems philosophically humorous, because we'll say, you know, kala vishesho, yasya prabha prabhavadha, yasya prabha prabhavadha, jagadandi koti svasesha vishurhari vibhuti binam, tad brahma nishkalam anantam ashesha bhutam, prabhavato jagadanda koti. And Brahma Sangyata talks about the millions of universes emanating from his outward going breath. Vishnur Mahan, Kala, he's a part. Balaram is the first other than Krishna. Um, Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradumna, Aniruddha. So, uh, he's making the point that, is, and is uh, delineated in the beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamritam, who we think of as the Paramatma, that's Mahaprabhu. Trace Paramatma to this word, you'll find Mahaprabhu. Who is Vishnu, the Jagadanda, creating so many universes? Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshaya Vishnu, Kiradakshaya Vishnu, Trace, go to the central conception of the infinite. Not only Krishna, you'll find Mahaprabhu. So, <clears throat> but sometimes, Srila Guru Maharaj will say, and as he's recorded in his own sloka, Guru Rupa Hurim Gauram Radha Ruchi Ruchavritam. He says, ostentatiously, his Guru or Acharya. Guru Rupa Hurim Gauram. We say, the Guru Rupa of Hari is Gaura. The Guru form, when Krishna takes the Guru form, says Gauranga. Swa Bhaktebya Sudham Nijabhajana Mudram Upadishan. With his own devotees, he is uh, showing devotion, the path of devotion. And an interesting uh, sidebar to this. Because we hear in the Bhagavatam, 
Chana Kalo and the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj. This is Prahlad, this is where we take it at the perhaps the first indication. I mean, the first, uh, we can trace, go back to the very first sloka through esoteric interpretation and find something. But here, think in Kali Yuga, appears in a hidden position, the Chana avatar. That's hidden by what? See, we can take hidden in different ways, meaning not overt, not obvious, not apparent, or Radha Ruchi Ruchavritam, covered by the heart and halo of Srimati Radharani. Therefore, he's hidden. That's what he's hidden. Why he's hidden. He's hidden beneath the heart and halo of Radharani. That's a very beautiful uh, concept of the hidden avatar. Radha Bhava Duti Subolita Nomi Krishna Swarupam. So, uh, or as Jiva Goswami puts it, Anta Krishna Bahir Gauram Darshitang Gadibai Bhavam Kalo Sankirtanad Yeshma Sri Krishna Chaitanya Samyakam. Anta, internally Krishna Bahir Gora and uh, externally, Gora, Goranga. And why Goranga? Radha Bhava Duti. Uh, due to Krishna's being concealed by the heart and halo of Srimati Radharani. So, really, uh, everyone is his disciple. Right? But we hear from Srila Guru Maharaj in terms of what we generally conceive of as initiation, like an initiated disciple. And it's somewhat of a technicality. But we're told that the, the, the or it's sometimes said that Vrakeshwara Pandit was the only initiated disciple. Right. Again, it's some sort of a technicality. Uh, and in the light of Guru Maharaj's Shiksha Guru Parampara uh, explanation, always pointing uh, toward the substance of the current as indicative of parampara or sampradaya uh, as Guru Maharaj himself was indicated as the Rupanuga Dara means um, Dara means one who's carrying something it also means current if you put them together it can it mean one who's carrying the current of Sri Rupa. So the reason Rupa Goswami is uh, say, the, uh, eponymously uh, synonymous with the, the name of the line, the Rupa Nuga Sampradaya, the followers of Sri Rupa, uh, is it's not in the conventional sense of some sort of succession or inheritance or indication. But, and that is there, we know, Srila Gurudev liked to tell this many times that it's a section of Chaitanya Charitamritam and the Antilila, I believe where Mahaprabhu is introducing Srila Rupa Goswami to his devotees and uh, that's taken to be as some indication of his extraordinary qualities, capacity. It was 
uh, alluded to earlier um, in the Madhya Leela that we hear uh, when Mahaprabhu would dance before the Ratiyatra and sometimes sing, we hear sometimes Swoop Damodar would sing to augment his mood, he'd sing certain songs, supply certain slokas. This is the seva of Swoop Damodar, Ramananda Roy. Um, and other times Mahaprabhu is singing himself. And sometimes when he is singing, He's singing a song that <coughs> could be misunderstood or misinterpreted um, from a um, superficial point of view. Uh, because in this song, the way Srila Guru Maharaj described it, he even said, singing a nasty song. It's a song, it's a, some poetry that's used in uh, the study of Sanskrit uh, poetry, alankar, how to ornament, alliterate, etc. That this poem is used to teach that because it's full of different types of uh, alankar, ornamentation. But the subject matter of the sloka is some girl losing her virginity in her teenage years on the bank of a river with her love, first lover, etc. That's the subject matter, apparently. So Mahaprabhu singing ecstatically before Jagannath, singing the song, it was a mystery. Why is he singing a song like that? This is not a devotional song. Now, it's somewhat uh, difficult for us to project what are the hearts and minds of those devotees surrounding him. So we have to look very carefully, um, cautiously within the pages of Charitamritam. We can understand these are all Mahabhagavatas of the highest order. We hear from books like the Gora Ganodesha Deepika. They have uh, what their identity is in Krishna Leela. So when it says, Sa Bhaktabya Shudham Nijabhajana Mudra Mupadishan by Rupa Goswami, this group of his own devotees, they've descended from Goloka Vrindavan. So we'll hear, if we look carefully in the purports, the quotations from the Gora Gonodesha Deepika, says, such and such devotee was a certain gopi in Vrindavan. Repeatedly, this type of uh, uh, you know, revelation is there. So who is this group? They're comprised of such extraordinary uh, individuals. They're all Mahabhagavatas of the highest order. Still, uh, we take so many things for granted that are extremely confidential right? and, and really esoteric. The real substance of what is esoteric. So uh, some of those devotees, let me talk, Jnana Shunya Bhaktas, they, theirs is not the reason why. Theirs is but to do or die. That's the way the poem goes. If Mahaprabhu is singing some particular song, that's a wonderful thing. They're not sitting there analyzing that, and the first verse said this, and then that. That's not their concern. Whatever he may say, and many times he may say something that is inexplicable for most. He may sometimes reveal himself in some situation where not everyone can see him. Like we hear at Pani, Panihati, the Raghunath Das Goswami Chira Doi festival that Nityananda Prabhu, that 
he can see that Mahaprabhu has come. Some other devotees can see that Mahaprabhu has come. What some others see is that they've made a place for him to sit and a place and they're offering something there. But others can see that he's actually appeared. This would happen in the Ratyatra. Sometimes there's what, seven groups. Tarachutananda is one of the dancers in the group. Each group has a main dancer, a main singer, two Murdunga players, responders, seven groups surrounding the Ratyatra uh, chariot, the Rat. Sometimes, what do they see? Maha, Mahaprabhu appears in each group and he's dancing intimately with that group. And they think, oh, he's in our group. They feel extraordinary. Uh, and see, he's not in any of the other groups. He's dancing in our group. But some can see he's in all seven groups. So, uh, such gradation of seeing is there even in, in the highest. And it's similar to Krishna Lila, Rasa Lila. The gopis, they think, he's dancing with me. I'm so fortunate. Each one thinks he's dancing with her and her alone. That's one level of fortune. We hear, what is the response of Srimati Radharani? He thinks, oh, I'm treated like everyone. No special treatment. And she displays superior singing and dancing and leaves, which pulls Krishna away from the Rasa Leela uh, in full swing with you know, billions of gopis. Thus, um, um, underscoring her extraordinary qualities, qualifications, uh, that for one, the, the pull of the devotion of one cancels all others. So, anyway, Mahaprabhu singing this, practically no one can understand why his heart, intention. But one year we hear that uh, Rupa Goswami, who would stay with Har Rupa and Sanatan, you know, did not enter the Jagannath temple because they were socially unacceptable, technically speaking, at that time. So they would stay with Haridas Thakur, who was also forbidden entrance in the temple, at the Siddha Bakul. And Rupa Goswami taking that song, that poetry that Mahaprabhu was singing, he wrote a parallel sloka, Priya Soyam, the first one begins, Yak Kumara Hara, his begins, Priya Soyam Krishna, Sahachari, and he's, in his sloka, he's identifying that boy is Krishna, that girl is Radharani, that river, it's not the Revat, it's actually the Jamuna, he is giving a parallel, explaining really what it means. And he wrote that sloka, it's also confidential, and on a palm leaf and stuck it in the thatch roof, the thatched hut roof, and went to bathe in the sea. And we're told at that time Mahaprabhu came and noticed that and pulled it down and read it and thought, <laughs> no one's supposed to know this. <laughs> said this Rupa Damodar, I don't understand. And they said, Rupa goes somewhere with it. He goes, how does Rupa know this? And Srupa Damodar's answer is, you must have revealed it to him in his heart. Because if you didn't want him to know, it's not possible to know. But what we're learning as, as this unfolds, is that Mahaprabhu knows, Rupa Damodar knows, and now they're both acknowledging that Rupa knows. What they know, Rupa knows. And is fully qualified to express 
Sri Gorana Matam Swarupa Viditam Rupagrajan Adritam Rupadye Parivesitam Ragugunaya Shaditam Shavitam and Guru Maharaj says Bhaktivinoda Virahadasakam said Sri Gorana Matam Swarupa Viditam why Mahaprabhu descended in this world the full internal secret of that is known fully only to Srup Damodar. But here we see, by extension, Rupa Goswami, and Rupa Goswami is capable of expressing this very nicely. Srup Damodar has his own sloka, slokas, his own notes. We're told Chaitanya Charitam Ritam is based on the notes of Srup Damodar. So we can attribute Authorship to Srup Damodar, to Raghunath Das Goswami, to Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. And it's full of slokas from Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami. There are many things there that are unifying, connecting all of them thematically and spiritual threads that are connecting. So Srup Damodar is Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Arladini Shakti Razmad. Then the Radha Bhava Duti Subalita, enveloped by the heart and halo of Radharani, Nomi Krishna Srupam. That, that Swarup, that Krishna. But so, and when Rupa Goswami comes back from bathing and Mahaprabhu sees them, we're told Mahaprabhu slaps Rupa Goswami. But in English, what we call a love tap. He just says, What are you doing? How, why are you you're writing these things? <laughs> Revealing everything. But he's noting, and then this is divine play, it's Leela. We can say he's recognizing the qualities of Rupa Goswami, but who is Rupa Goswami? Mahaprabhu, his uh, in one sense, becoming newly acquainted from a different perspective with these personalities. Because Krishna, as the enjoyer, that's another context, another perspective, and he's candidly revealing in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamritam, that his curiosity has been awakened to experience the position of Srimati Radharani and not in a mere intellectual way or by conjecture, but substantially. And the only way he can experience that substantially is to uh, become enveloped and under the influence of her heart and halo. And the only way he can get her heart from her is to steal it. Right? So Rupa Goswami says, Aparam Kasyapi, Pranayi Janavrinda Shukutuki, Rasotstamam Hritva, Madhuram Upabhoktum Kamapiya, Rucham Svam Avavre Dutim Ihatariam, Satchetanya Deva Kritir Ati Deva. Vaskriti, na kripaya, kripayan, kripayatu, I forget, atitaram na kripayatu. Then there's three Chaitanyastakams. And in this particular one, saying surveying all of them, these super servitors, who are on the on, on the Chinmayarasa, Pratibhavi, Tavis, Tabiriya, Rupa, Nija Rupataya, Kalavi, Goloka. Eva Nivasat Yakilatma Bhuto. They're all extensions of Radharani. But her extensions have unique personalities. In one sense, they're all from her, but they're not expansions in the sense that uh, 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 one identity. So that's inconceivable. 
but true. Achintya Beda Bed. So they're expansions of her, but they have in individual unique personalities. Surveying all of them, as Krishna sees her way of dealing, her degree and magnitude of dedication exceeds that of all others. In the Radhastakam, Rupa Goswami says, Hari Padanaka Koti Prishta Parjanta Simha Tatam Api Kalyantam Pranir Abhishtana Pramudita Madhurakshi Vrinda Bhaidogya Dika, Dika Guru Kirtin Guru Guru Mapi Guru Kirtin Radhika Marchayami Guru Mapi Guru Kirtin Radhika Marchayami Think Haripara Naka Koti Prishta Parjanta Simha that uh, This is the opening sloka and he wants to give some indication of some unparalleled magnitude. So he's giving a system of measurement, system of devotional measurement. How to measure devotional magnitude. So, so the least aspect of Krishna Let's say, is the feet, the lotus feet. Although someone could say, Angani Yasya Sakalendriya Vrittimanti, that the, all the Angas, they're interchangeable, and yes, yes, yes. You know. But for the sake of analysis, we'll say the least aspect are the lotus feet. Right? So generally start at the feet and go higher. But if we wanted to analyze it further, then we would say, well, what's the least aspect of the feet, of the lotus feet? Then we would say, well, that would be the nails on the lotus feet. So the nails on the lotus feet, that would be the least aspect. Hari Padanaka means the nails of the lotus feet of Krishna. Uh, uh, the back, Prishte uh, Parjanta. So, what Rupa Goswami is saying here, Radharani considers the least aspect of Krishna to be uh, millions of times greater than the highest aspect of herself. Pranair, Abhishta, Pran. So, what we consider to be ourselves, our life, the most important thing. She's saying, the least aspect of Krishna is greater than my highest aspect, magnified millions of times. So Rupa Goswami is offering this as a system of measurement of devotional magnitude and why her position is so extraordinary. Uh. And he's saying, if you can adopt this kind of sweet vision and see things this way, then really you can be initiated into Krishna consciousness, understanding. This is the secret, this is the thread that's going through na prema gandasti dharapi mehoro, through Prabodhananda Saraswati, who, who is Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur? Uh, Tunga Vidya, one of the Astasakis, the eight principal gopi associates of Srimati Radharani. How exalted are these personalities? If you think about it, if there's Radha and Krishna at the center of everything, and then next to them are Lalita and Vishaka, and these other uh, Sakis, the Astasakis, of all the possible personalities there are, how exalted they are. And what is that Prabodhananda Saraswati uh, Tungavidya as Prabodhananda in uh, Gaur Lila Express? In the, uh, oh, it says, uh, Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> I have to think about it. Yasyakadapi was an unjalakela nota, Danyati danya pavane in a kritartamani, Yogendram durgamagati marushud and opi, Tasha no most the Brishabana bubodi shapi, Bhuvo. He's saying that um, Krishna. If he has the good fortune that in the divine pastimes of Radha and Krishna, if under some circumstances the, 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 um, the wind from her cloth comes upon him, right? Radharani is, if the breeze from her cloth comes upon Krishna, he thinks that he has achieved the greatest fortune. There are many different ways that people can measure wealth. How does the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Reality, measure value? So if he gets the breeze from the garment of Radharani upon him, his divine form, he considers that to be the most valuable treasure. That Krishna who, Yogindram Durga Magati Madhusudanopi, right? Sureshanam Durga, well, that's Mahaprabhu, same thing, right? Sureshanam Durga Magati Ati Shayeno Panishadam, who the great yogis. They're trying to get a glimpse of the Upanishads, the gods. Right? When Krishna is a baby and Trinavarti went in the sky, part of the path, they say one of the reasons he went in the sky is to let the goddesses, gods and goddesses, like, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> so who's Durgam? Very difficult to have a glimpse of. Brahma, trying to get an audience with Krishna. Muhyanti Atsuraya. That Krishna considers himself so fortunate to be blessed by the breeze from the garment of Srimati Radharani. So the conclusion of Prabodha Ananda Saraswati Thakur is... A, special note. Okay? Therefore, she's so great, she's so exalted, so ex extraordinary, so exceptional, that I consider the direction in which she appeared to be worshipable. Okay? Well, those in the, who are the sadhakas, in, in the lowest position, they're voyeuristically envisioning themselves as uh, servitors in the divine domain, in the upper world, in the most confidential region of the spiritual uh, existence. We have those who are newly recruited and acquainted with Krishna consciousness projecting themselves into those situations. Someone who's actually there, Astasaki Tungavidya, Prabodhananda Saraswati and Gaur Lila says, the direction in which she appeared is worshipable to me. That's close enough for me. That's what's said by someone who's actually there, an eyewitness to all of these things. An eyewitness to how Krishna feels when he's blessed with the breeze of the garment of Srimati Radharani. He says, the direction in which she appears is worshipable to me. So the system for measuring devotional magnitude is always in the inverse. Right? <clears throat> 
So uh, that what I mean to say also is that um, the perspective of that group represented by Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur, Astasakis, and means the eight principle. It's obviously unique and they're uniquely qualified. And in the words of Srila Guru Maharaj, he would say, Sri Rupa is the leader of the juniors, of their assistants. So once, when I came to offer myself, to the lotus feet of Srila Guru Maharaj. Uh, and this is like August of 1981. We're having this one conversation. And I, there was so much discussion about Jiva Shakti and Jiva Tattva. And this, but hopefully if that is grasped and understood, then can move a little further in a particular direction. So, one day, I was thinking on the basis of what he had expressed as being the potential, the constitutional capacity of jiva souls, how far they can go. So, I was sort of thinking out loud, and I said, the third position, I didn't say any, there wasn't a big explanation. I, was, I said, the third position, and Guru said, fifth. <laughs> and I went, oh! <laughs> because I wasn't counting the first two. <laughs> I, I didn't count Radha and Krishna. <laughs> I thought, that's too much. So I said, third, he's fifth. I went, oh! And what he meant to say was that uh, and without going into the details, this is something very high and the like, but we're to know at least in principle what it is. What's objectionable is to try and uh, cult, uh, to discuss, cultivate the details of that. But the general understanding should be there that and Guru Maharaj has expressed this, that Radha Krishna, in their private union, those Sakis, the she friends of Radharani who are equal to her, they cannot enter at that time because it will cause some shyness for Srimati Radharani in their presence. But the juniors can go and render some assistance because they're younger, they're very young girls. The leader of the juniors is Sri Rupa. And that is why this is the Rupanuga line. So the, the, according to the constitutional capacity of jiva souls, they can enter into a position of assistance in that plane of seva. So on the one hand, it sounds like you're going further away. Fifth position. But because the elders cannot enter in that time, actually what is not available to them, that seva that is not available to them, is extended by the grace of Rupa Goswami and their followers to these, uh, those who are in their line. So, it's, mm-hmm. Mahaprabhu is recognizing with Rup Damodar, who's Lalita Saki, Radha Krishna, Lalita Vishaka, Mahaprabhu, Ramananda Swarup. So they're in the position to recognize who is the most superior of the next level, rung, group, and that is Rupa. So, Kaviraj Goswami ending every chapter, Rupa Raghunatha Pade Hoibe Jara Ash Chaitanya Charitamritam Kohe Krishna Das. And Sanatana Goswami, who's the elder 
and he's constantly, and Rupa's revering his guru, but it's Rupa, Rupa Sanatan, because Rupa technically came first, and there's some esoteric meaning behind that. But in Brihad Bhagavatamritam, that massive revelation that takes shape in the form of the Brihad Bhagavatamritam, Sanatan Goswami says, by the mercy of Rupa, this was all revealed to me. So Guru Maharaj would say sometimes, somewhere Sanatan Goswami describes himself as a Rupanuga. And of course, Raghunath Das Goswami, the Prayojan Tattva Acharya, also considers himself a follower of Sri Rupa. So, <coughs> later, in the Antialila, when Mahaprabhu is, at this point, shining a special spotlight on Rupa Goswami and in this sense introducing him to all the senior servitors there to have them understand what is the capacity of Rupa Goswami starts asking him these books you're writing the Dagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, like that each book, the system, they have some beginning sloka and some other slokas, and Mahaprabhu was in. You can tell those slokas so everyone can hear that because they're all connoisseurs. When they hear this, they'll be able to recognize this type of spiritual substance. So when the um, Mahaprabhu says that uh, because it's appropriate in the beginning to identify your Ishta Devata, means your worshipable deity. Riva Goswami is shy in the background and hesitating to come forward. And Guru Dev has drawn the parallel that Guru Maharaj was shy and hesitating in the background when Saraswati Thakur asked him to come forward to sing Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, which is the anthem of Gaudiya Vaishnavas written by Narutam Thakur. And so when Mahaprabhu is, they're insisting, and they're, then Rupa Goswami says, Anarpita charin chirat koranayava tirnakalo samar payatam unatojvala rasam swabhakti sriyam haripurata sundurduti kadamba sandipita sadahridaya spuratu vasachinandana kandare. Um, he identifies Mahaprabhu as his worshipable deity. And Mahaprabhu said, well, I think there's some exaggeration in this particular sloka. <laughs> he didn't expect that. <laughs> Thought he was going to sing something else. Of course, all the devotees thought that was just so perfect and so beautiful. And that's why Rupa Goswami uh, you know, is unparalleled. In, in this sense. In one place, Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, uh, as one meaning of Rupa is beauty, that if you could separate the beauty of Srimati Radharani and personify it as one, that is Sri Rupa. So, in consideration that Srimati Radharani is the most beautiful woman of all time and all existence, to say, if you could extract her beauty from her and personify it in one, that would be Sri Rupa. So it's beyond, defies mundane description. But, uh, so, And Rupa Goswami wrote the book of devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. But Sanatan Goswami is the Sambandhagyana Charja, and all the Sambandhagyana <coughs> within the pages of the Brihad Bhagavatamritam, the gradation is all presented there very. Um, perfectly, systematically, in great detail. And if you look in the 
Chaitanya Charitamrita, the so-called Sanatan Shiksha, and see what Mahaprabhu uh, expressed to Sanatan Goswami. It's inconceivably wonderful. Even though there's so many philosophical points that are covered, but at one point we see Mahaprabhu, uh, remember, in the mood of a devotee, he's relishing this devotional position. As we told recently with the Kirchor Gopinath, it's mentioned when Mahaprabhu is telling the story of Madhavendra Puri there, when the Pujari brings the Kir to Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu and his group, it's mentioned there that Mahaprabhu tasted this before as Gopinath. Right? He's also Krishna. So he's already... T- so is this redundant? No. Because now he's going to taste prasadam. That's what he wants to do. And he's telling us by these pastimes that the position of the devotee that's a greater taste, that's a greater position to be in than Krishna. And only he can say that, because he's Krishna. <laughs> if he wasn't Krishna, uh, we might doubt it. He said, well, no. <laughs> but he's Krishna, and he's saying, take it from me, Krishna, the supreme enjoyer, that the position of the devotee, particularly the highest devotee, Srimati Radharani, is greater. It's a more wonderful thing. So, Guru is saying, out of gratitude, those, when we hear the sequence, Shraddha, Ado Shraddha, Tata Sarusanga, Bhajana Kriya, Narta Nivritti Nishta, Ruchi, Bhav, Ruchi, Tasha, Shakti, Bhav, then comes Prem, then after Prem, Krishna comes, so Bhav, the blossom, what was a bead seed in the beginning, has blossomed as Bhava Bhakti, and then the fruit Krishna Prem is produced, and from there it goes further, what is it, uh, Sneho, Man, Pranay, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Maha Bhav, so when you get up to that bhav, the second one, after Krishna Prem, we're told the beyond that exceeds the constitutional capacity of a jiva soul. And that bhav, which is only experienced generally by Braja Gopis, we're told that Subal, who's the leader of the highest rung of cowherd boys, he can experience that. But this maha bhav is beyond the... Con- the the gopi, they're not experiencing, others are not experiencing. So we're told Mahabhav is reserved for Radharani Mahaprabhu. This is what is expressed. But Srila Guru Maharaj is pointing out that Srimati Radharani, out of gratitude to her serving group, Seva, according to the intensity of its necessity, draws remuneration. So at the greatest, uh, when separation has reached its greatest depth and magnitude, those who will serve at that time, Bhaktivinoda identified as Kurukshetra. What is the theme of Ratiatra? Kurukshetra. These two points are significant. Kurukshetra, Ratiatra as one, and um, Udavkyari, the Brahmar Gita as the other, where uh, separation has reached its intensity, greatest intensity and necessity. Bhaktivinoda Tagore says, if you serve at that time, what will come in its remuneration? Srila Guru Maharaj says, Mahabhav, which can only be experienced by Radharani and Mahaprabhu, said Radharani is saying, here, have a taste of what we're enjoying on our plate. She's distributing maha bhav out of gratitude to the servitors. So what exceeds the constitutional capacity of a jiva soul, they're being given a taste of that. And in the words of Srila Guru Maharaj, once one has tasted that divine substance, not only all other tastes, but all other rasas become tasteless. That is the Rupa Nuga line. 
That's why they're happily in this line, promoting Radharani. Because what will come in, in, in retinue of the service of Radharani will far exceed the constitutional capacities of Jiva, what they could get in a direct relationship, association with Krishna. That's why it's so extraordinary. So he says, Narpita charin chirat koranayavatirnakalo moho namo mahavadanaya krishna prema pradayate What's Mahaprabhu distributing? Rupa Goswami's identity. Unatodrala rasam swabhakti sriyam. You can say devotion to himself or the kind of devotion that he himself has embraced. Radha Bhav. So these are very high, very extraordinary things. But Krishna consciousness is a very high, the most high, most extraordinary thing. So we can't spend, you know, we'll faint to think about these things extensively and it's not appropriate. But at least we need to know in a general sense, without going into the details, what the prospect is. It's something extraordinary. We think that we know what Krishna consciousness is. That is uh, our, uh, you know, it's a problem that we have. <laughs> you think like, we heard, a, we heard this said so many times or that said so many times. Yeah, because we have a superficial idea of what it is. But sometimes, by the grace of the Guru Varga, a little glimpse, coruscating flashes of brilliance. Bhaktivinoda Tagore says like lightning. Like when it's pitch black and lightning comes, it illuminates everything. For a moment you see everything. And then it vanishes. But that glimpse leaves in its retinue a type of increased hankering uh, to pursue. Um, so it's all grace. Right? How can we sit here and even vibrate the name of Rupa Goswami and others? We don't know anything about any of these things. It was, it's the grace, the gift from our Guru Varga. They somehow brought us in connection with us <coughs> and gifted us the capacity to appreciate it on some level. That's also a gift. If we can appreciate this on any level, that's a gift. So we're, we think, you know, I, I have, you know, 500 friends on Facebook. You have five trillion friends in the spiritual world who are, you know, they're trying to help us. <laughs> they're trying to friend us. And we're riveted to the persons, places, things of this world. Sudurlaba Bhagavata Hiloke. Oh, the real devotee in this world is rare, very rare to find. But Guru Maharaj said, in this world. But there's another world where everyone is a pure devotee. <laughs> and that's the greater world. If you compare the two worlds from spiritual analysis, that world is vast. This world has been referred to variously as the clouded portion of the spiritual sky. Uh, when Goloka Vrindavan is <coughs> discussed as being 16 kroshas or 32 square miles mystically, we're told, well, that sounds like small. Right? Say, yes, and within an atom of the dust there are innumerable Vaikuntha planets. Mm. 
It means we're going to have to readjust ourselves to properly conceive these things. It can only be conceived of uh, through grace. As the sun's illumination, you know, the sun allows the eye to see. What did Guru say? Faith is the halo of Radharani. She's revealing Krishna, but out of service necessity, not out of curiosity. If someone has a genuine uh, service necessity, they will journey to the center of the infinite. They'll be fully endowed beyond their wildest dreams with serving capacity, if that's what it really is. And otherwise, Guru Maharaj laughed and said, you mean that image when we say Krishna or we saw in a book, or we have this image of Krishna in our mind. He said, that's Krishna. Right? You really think that is Krishna? <laughs> because we saw a poster no, it was a really good one. <laughs> we heard a description. Right? Young Shama Sundara Machinta Gunas Rupam. Someone who is inconceivably beautiful and has an inconceivably beautiful form, color, movement, all of these things. <clears throat> Then someone said, well, then that means we're totally dependent upon our Guru Varga. Yes, that's correct. And we'll only know as much as they reveal to us. Yes, that's correct. It won't be a mental or intellectual exercise. It won't be the transfer of information. It won't be, you know, data mining. Madurakshi Vrindabai Dagdadika. The extension of a particular sweet type of seeing, or they can say, seeing sweetness, personified, madhura, madurakshi, maduram maduram, madurasya vibho vadanam madanam, maduram madanam, marugandhi reduce me to me to the whole, maduram 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 maduram, bilva mangal thakur. He could only be saying these words so many times, it implies a certain mood of, uh, like, of ecstatic expression. Saying, Krishna, he's so sweet, how sweet. His, his form is sweet. Vishve samana ranjanena janayam anandam indivara shreni shamala komali anangotsavam. He's like, his, he looks like a festival. All the, the beauty of Krishna. He's so sweet. And he's saying, and his face is even sweeter than the rest of him. But, but if it, that face has a smile on it, that's the sweeter still. Sweet, 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 sweet. Kosturi tilakam lalata palake bhakshastale koshtubam nashagre namamoktikam karutale venam kare kankanam sarvanga haritandanam chakalayan Gurudev liked that sloka very much and it is a description of how beautiful Krishna looks, especially when he's surrounded by the Braja Gopis. So Rupa Goswami is the leader of everything we could hope to aspire to. 
Sri Radhika Madhava Sam Nityam Rupanuga Sri Kritimati Guru Gauranga Radha Jita Sa. Someone said, that is Chaitanya Saraswat Maharaj. Nityam Rupanuga Sri Kritimati Guru Gauranga Radha Jita Sa. <coughs> the members of this mat maintain this aspiration for the service of those holy lotus feet. Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, Seymora Sampada, Seymor Bhajana Pujan, Seymora, Seymor Vrata, Tapa, Mantra Japa. Guru Maharaj said, <coughs> what this means is not that the aspiration, why I'm, I'm taking the mantra and the japa and doing all these things with this aspiration. He's saying, no, actually the service of the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami is our mantra. The service of the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami is our japa, our everything. That's what it means to say. And Guru Gauranga Radha Jitasa or Goragata Grananti, Guru Maharaj is identifying the primary activity of the members of Chaitanya Saraswat Mat are to spread the glories of Mahaprabhu, which is Krishna celebrating the devotion of Srimati Radharani, otherwise known as the Krishna Consciousness Movement. 